Hello, and welcome to POMA Does, a podcast produced by the Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association. We provide a voice for osteopathic medicine and share insights on issues important to osteopathic physicians, residents, and students, as well as those who embrace the osteopathic philosophy. POMA's mission is to promote the distinctive philosophy and practice of osteopathic medicine for our patients, our members, and the communities we serve. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to POMA Podcast. We're here tonight featuring Dr. John Collada, the president of POMA. My name is Dr. Michael Kondash. I'm a osteopathic family physician in Clark Summit. I had the honor and privilege to be at Dr. Collada's installation at Kalahari in the Poconos. We had a very good time, enjoyed the whole weekend with John and his family. He was kind enough to ask me to introduce him at his installation and enjoyed it tremendously. So thank you, John, for that again. Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, good stuff. You know, I know you have a lot going on. You're always busy in meetings. I'd like to tease you about that often, but I did get a chance to read your POMA Forward Together message, kind of encapsulated what you have planned out for the year. And I'm sure all the POMA members would be interested to hear a little bit more about all of that. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, it was really a great time. And I appreciate you doing it on more or less short notice. But once again, the K team muffled through. And <laughs> thanks again for being there. It was really nice. For those of you who are debating about whether or not to come to Kalahari next year, for our annual clinical assembly. It's a very nice place, a lot to do for the family. The education was superb and the governance meetings were very, very well, but it's a wonderful place to bring the family, your children and grandchildren and and we had a really good time. So I'd encourage all of you to think about coming next year. It was really great. But Mike, you were asking about some of my presidential initiatives for this coming year. And I have to say that I've had the great fortune to work with three past presidents over the last three years, Dr. Jean Battistella, Dr. Joe Zawissa, and Dr. Lisa witherite Reg, who really have created a tremendous bit of momentum in our organization in Palma. They've done a lot of great things that I hope to build on this year. Our membership is up, our finances are strong, and our initiatives have been really great under our four pillars, advocacy, education, communications, and community. Really, we're going to talk a little bit about each of those. The pillar that I've been responsible for the last two, now three years, has been the community pillar. We've done a lot, and that's encompassed membership, activities with the medical students, with residency programs, and we hope to expand on that in the next year or so. I was really honored to see how the culture at the POMA meeting was so positive and the staff of POMA were very, very knowledgeable, very helpful. And you could just see that they put up a great event. People were happy being there. I noticed watching around and obviously the community culture that you're developing within POMA is paying off and kudos to all the past presidents for helping and allowing you to take it to the next level. Thanks, Mike. You know, one of the things our staff makes us look good and our organization really has become member driven with many of our ideas, many of our thoughts driven by membership and the board of trustees, the districts, the district chairs, and then that gets filtered into the leadership. And then we take it and create some plans and then it really gets actualized by our staff. And that really makes being a leader a real joy in our organization. Some things we want to do this year, I think, are focusing on community again. And I think the three things that we really want to focus on this year, one is the residents, two is the medical students, and three is our military and veteran physicians. And if it's okay, I just want to talk about those three for a minute. The first is our postgraduate engagement committee. It was called in the past the PGYP committee, the postgraduate and young physician committee. And we've struggled a little bit with really finding a way to connect with our residents in training, giving them some meaningful content, letting them know what home is able to do for them, and really getting them involved in some things that we do. We were able to get some residents on a lot of our committees this year, and the committees are just now getting off the ground and they'll be doing some great work. But in the past, when there were such things as AOA internships and residencies, we had an automatic conduit to all the residency programs. All the program directors were fellow DOs. Many of those now legacy programs had coordinators who were there for years, and it would be one phone call and you could get in and you could visit with these young physicians in training. And now it's a little harder. A lot of the places our emails are blocked. A lot of the places our emails don't really get through. And I think if we can get our faces and our message in front of our young physicians, we'll have a much better chance of letting them know what POMA has to offer offer and getting them involved and hopefully letting them become members throughout their careers, which is really the strength of our organization is in our membership. So 
we want our young physicians really to get involved. So we have some initiatives thought of. Dr. Dave Kuo and Dr. Lisa Weatherite Reg are going to be co-chairs of that committee, and we hope to really get some meaningful things out to the residents this year. If there are any residents listening, you know, we have scholarship programs for residents. We do the Poma Foundation funds, residency wellness programs. Programs have done things like cooking classes or tubing or bowling nights, or we don't do ax throwing because we don't want anybody getting injured. But if it doesn't involve like dangerous activities or alcohol, we're pretty much game and we do fund those. I think we funded 34 residency programs at I think $500 a piece last year. So it was really great. So we hope to do some meaningful things with the residents. That's one of our initiatives. Quick question about that, John, that block, the inability to reach out to the residents via the program. Is there a way that the residents can somehow use their ability to reach out to their program directors, mentors to maybe unblock some of that, a methodology in place for that, or is going to be some ways to help residents to be able to do that? There are some ways. Because we have residents involved in some of our committees, that's a foot in the door to some of the programs. We're thinking of perhaps doing just a come one, come all night where we might have two or three Zoom meetings with all the residents across the state and you get what you get. And by word of mouth, then you know they'll introduce us to their program directors or to their coordinators, and then we can get into programs that way. When we can get in front of the young physicians, we have a fair amount of success. I think part of it is we live in a digital world and we're inundated with emails. I know how I am with my emails. If I'm not captivated by the subject line, I may just delete it because I have a hundred other things to do. A young physician in training has a thousand things to do, and he or she just needs to know that if Poma is sending a message, it's oftentimes for their benefit. The thing that I fear is the concept of one more thing. Oh my gosh, it's one more thing. Oh my gosh, it's one more thing. So we hope to not overwhelm the residents, but if they can just open their emails and look at some things we have to offer, I think that's a start. Things like the podcast series, it's one or two clicks on the Poma app. So they can find out what's going on with the podcasts. If they can just read their newsletters, they can find out what's going on. So there's other ways, there's other vehicles where young people can get some information. So we're hopeful that we'll be able to find ways to creatively engage with some of the residents. And then the whole student initiative, we do have monthly meetings with student leaders from LECOM Erie, LECOM at Seton Hill, and PCOM. So the student government presidents and the SOMA presidents meet with us once a month. And that's been going on for the last couple of years. And and those young physicians and trainer are very energetic and very engaged, and they have really great ideas. One thing that came up in a meeting a couple of weeks ago was perhaps using targeted social media where a message of the month or a message of the week, a Facebook or Instagram page just for the students. That might be a way that you can engage with something that they're seeing every day. It doesn't take a lot of effort. And that was an idea that was generated from the students. So we're going to bring that to the mentor committee, and then the mentor committee can hopefully actuate that. So the various levels of the committee work, I think hopefully we'll be able to get things done. We're real fortunate that the people who are chairs of the committees are really great people, all fellow DOs, and have wonderful ideas. So we hope that bringing those ideas to the manor committee will be helpful. I think it's really important, John, for POA to have a face with the students. They're so challenged today with boards and ACGME slash AOA residencies that they really need to have that continuous osteopathic presence in their lives. I think so. It's strong in the first two years, much like when we were in school. You're in OMT lab every week. You have the beauty of Nick Nicholas on his soapbox, but really bleeding heart and soul about the osteopathic tradition and such. But then when you go out into your rotations, that third and fourth year, we lose a little bit of it. For many of us, it's a road show. We're living out of our suitcases or away from our campuses. And so you lose a little bit of that. And I think you lose a little bit of that contact with POMA. If the president or somebody from the leadership goes to the campus, we're really not engaging with the third and fourth years as much as the first and second years. So there's that disconnect. You know, the Palma Foundation donates white coats and stethoscopes to the first years, but then maybe they forget about us after they're gone from campus. Those transition times between second year and third year, and then from fourth year graduation and into residency, those are times where I think we we need to keep hitting our message to the medical students and to the residents to keep them engaged because we do have a lot to offer as an organization. Yeah, that's a great point. Looking forward to being on that mentor committee. Thank you for allowing me to join that. You're welcome, Mike. I knew you didn't have enough meetings, so I thought we would throw that at you. But I think you'll enjoy it. The people on that committee really have a lot of great ideas and a lot of energy. And I think you need that when you're trying to make connections. One thing we did this last year, the mentor committee did, was they did a two-part series on retirement. So there were several retiree physicians who 
presented in a roundtable format by Zoom information on how to gracefully retire. It was not focused on finances as much as it was emotions and preparing yourself, preparing your family, preparing your life for a life after practice. And so it was quite nice to hear from folks who've been through it now are in a different phase of their life. And the people who were the listeners or the attendees were folks who maybe weren't ready to retire like myself, but are starting to maybe think about what life might look like in the next 15 years or so, or maybe when we're 88 years old. But certainly sometime in our lives when we're not practicing, it was nice to hear. So the mentor committee extended its efforts to the younger physicians, but also to those of us who are maybe more seasoned. And it was a very, very nice extension or development of the mentor committee in really reaching out to people who are ready to retire, thinking about it. So we hope to do a little bit more of that this year too. We're all students after all. We sure are. And I think there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn in your later years where you got to learn how to function. And some of these folks were like, now I sold my practice, now what? And so they had some really great tips. What about the military, John? I know that's a big focus for, you know, your dad was in the military. My father was in the military. We just had Memorial Day. We certainly honor everyone who served our country and paid with their lives to give us our freedom and protect us. One thing we hear of our members maybe getting deployed or coming back from deployment. You hear stories of perhaps some of the struggles they've gone through, some of the things that they've seen even in a non-combat role, thank goodness right now, but people who've been in combat or people who just are away from their families or away from their practices or people who are in the reserves. I think there's a certain need that Poma might be able to, to fill for these folks, whether it's just support and creating a virtual interest groups or just being there for these folks, but we don't really even know what they might need. So we commissioned a task force chaired by Reagan Shablowski, my friend who's a family physician, ER physician up in Erie, who's been deployed several times through the pandemic in areas of need and has a leadership role, I believe, in the reserves. And he's chairing that task force. So other physicians who are veterans or maybe are still in the reserves, we hope to draw on their expertise first and foremost to really see what their needs might be and then to see where we can meet those needs as an organization. The other thing is, I think the experience that veterans and people in the military bring to life and their practice and potentially to the organization, I think is invaluable. We just don't know what's out there. And so rather than guessing, we thought we would convene a task force to really explore it a little bit and hopefully bring some recommendations to me and to the board that we can act on so that we can really serve our people who've given a lot of their lives to the service of our country and then you know bring them some stuff and maybe use their expertise and draw on their expertise to grow our organization and to bring some value to maybe our younger members members. So we maybe sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And I think this is the first step. Yeah, that's awesome. Tell me a little bit about the political action committee for Palma. Does that get involved with the military personnel at all in terms of perhaps politics, either state, local or federal? So in our advocacy pillar, we have the Government Affairs Committee. Government Affairs meets monthly. We have our Vice President for Public Policy, Andy Sandusky, uh, does a really great job with our emphasis as a Pennsylvania organization with the state. And so we look at state politics. We look at things that might affect the state, not so much nationally, although we're aware of what's going on nationally, but things like scope of practice creep, where nurse practitioners want to practice independently. Athletic trainers want some broader abilities to be able to do some things maybe on the sidelines. So pharmacists who in the past have wanted to give immunizations to children, kind of taking it out of the hands of the family doctor who has, or the pediatrician who has an area of expertise that can talk about development and, and all those psychosocial and medical things that we need to talk about at intervals. So all those sorts of local things, the government affairs committee is involved with. Public policy committee in that pillar really talks about policy statements that we come to as an organization. If there's a controversial issue or an issue that's being debated, how do we want to stand as an organization? And we really look at what's the best for our patients, what's the best for osteopathic medicine in Pennsylvania, but ultimately what's the best for our patients. So the policy statements that they generate are really generated, endorsed by the board, and that becomes our policy. The political action committee, just briefly, we support politicians who support osteopathic physicians and our patients. So I don't want to talk too much about that, but I can say that we're neither red nor blue. And we're not purple either. We're pro-patient, pro-physician. The PAC does help with supporting people who are supportive of us and our patients. That's an aggressive look at what your year is planned for. And I know you're planning to get out to all of the various districts to convey a lot of these messages and to lead us into you know the next year. How are you going to do all this? I mean, it's a lot. You're going to be visiting a lot of places and doing everything else. You're going to be working. 
you know, worried about you. Got to tell me how you're going to handle all this. Well, I think I have a manic chromosome. Mike. I just <laughs> activate the manic chromosome when I go. I do think you need to be a little crazy to do some of the leadership things. There's 14 districts, 13 districts, really. We hope to visit all of them. The districts at the level of the districts, that's where the education, some of the education occurs. That's where some of the local community events occur. Hopefully that's where we're going to grow some of our membership. So I think it's important for the president or one of the other, the four P's, as we like to call them, the media past president, vice president, president-elect. I might deputize some of our folks. Bill Swallow as president-elect, George Walters as vice president, Lisa Witherai Reg as media past president. They've all offered their kind support. So we may use those folks to help us go and visit the districts. But the pandemic, we hope, is over. And the ability to get together is great. I think many of us are not are not that old that we don't remember the physician locker room or the physician dining room. Mm -hmm. Physician dining room where at, at lunchtime, you solved a lot of the problems of the world. You got a chance to commiserate with your friends. You would yep. talk about patients. You would troubleshoot. You would share some commonalities and you know maybe some coffee that was not so good, but that's getting lost. And I think some of the district events have been really nice because we can all get together again. And I think that's really nice. As DOs, we need socialization. We need people. We need each other. And the districts generate ideas as well. So with the district leadership council, all the district chairs get together once every couple months. We talk about things that we might do, some common things that maybe some best practices that other districts can emulate. So that's something that's really great. You know, District 4, for instance, you guys have a winter, like a one-day conference that Darlene Dene puts on. I know District 8 that puts on a big conference, and now it's at Seven Springs. They had some ideas maybe that District 4 can learn from and build some of that education together back and forth. So you know, we can build off each other and that's all part of that community and communication. Yeah, wow, that's great stuff. Well, it looks like it's going to be a fantastic year for you. A lot of good things on the agenda. And, you know, all of us here in the POMA world, DO world, you know, who've been long-term POMA members, we're here to help you in any way we can. Obviously, you have a great team with you. And buddy, I love you. You're going to do this. I know it. A whole year, it's going to be great. Thanks, Mike. You know, as physicians, we all have jobs and we all have families. And being part of POMA, it's an honor to be part of it. It's an honor to lead. But it's also so gratifying. I so much appreciate everybody listening, everybody being part of our organization and really contributing in whatever way you can. So thank you, Mike, for once again, being my MC, both at Kalahari and now virtually on our podcasts. Great night visiting with you. And thank you all for listening. And we look forward to a great year. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Palma Does. Be sure to subscribe to Palma Does wherever you listen to your podcasts and tell your friends and colleagues to tune in. Learn more about osteopathic medicine and POMA on our webpage, www.poma.org, and join the conversation on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube, or email us at poma at poma.org. We'd love to hear from you. Join us next time for another edition of POMA Does.